Far below these rolling Anatolian hills, an ancient fire stirs. Turkey sits at the crossroads of three tectonic plates. In the Alashahir Valley, deep fractures channel scorching water upward, with temperatures often exceeding 200 degrees C. It's a restless furnace, a thin crust and active fault zone, bringing the planet's heat strikingly close to the surface. This geological feature offers a natural resource which can be developed into a fully sustainable renewable energy source, known as geothermal energy. Currently, Turkey is ranked number four in the world in terms of installed geothermal power generation capacity. Yet across the globe and across Turkey, much of our power still comes from coal and gas. These fuels drive economies, but they bind our future to carbon emissions and climate risk. The cost of geothermal energy has been steadily decreasing in the past few years. It's the perfect time to push geothermal research even further. We visited this geothermal power plant to find out. Run by Maspo Energy, this plant is situated about 80 miles outside of Izmir in Turkey's Alashahir Valley. This is a mountainous region known for its volcanic activity with the Maspo plant sitting just 23 miles or 38.6 kilometers away from Kula, an active volcanic field. While volcanoes have represented one of the major natural dangers for humanity throughout history, countries like Iceland and Turkey are now actually able to take advantage of these geological features. While it is technically possible to create geothermal plants anywhere in the world, there is one major hurdle currently in the way of mass adoption for this green technology, digging. In most regions of the world, geothermal would require digging to about 10 kilometers or more, about 6.2 miles. Traditional digging equipment struggles at these depths and temperatures due to aspects like the drilling column, which can bend and flex easily with these great lengths needed, and the earth and rock, which turns into a fudge-like consistency, blunting blades very quickly. The Kola SG3, the deepest borehole ever dug, took 24 years between May 1970 and August 1994, reaching a depth of 12.2 kilometers or 7.6 miles. Volcanic regions do not have this challenge, as the required heat sits much closer to the surface of the Earth. But why do this at all? And what are the benefits of geothermal energy? To understand this, first we need to look at what geothermal energy is and how the energy is actually harnessed. Geothermal energy uses superheated fluids from below the Earth to generate electricity. Underneath the Earth's surface are reservoirs of water, superheated by the magma even further below it. By digging into the Earth, geothermal energy plants can access this heat and draw it towards the surface. Within the plant, this heat energy vaporizes a secondary fluid, whose steam then spins turbines. The kinetic energy from the spinning turbines gets transformed into electricity. It all starts with the production well. This is the passage drilled into the Earth's crust to reach the hot geothermal fluid underneath. A ground survey allows people to discover where wells can be drilled and plan accordingly. The well is drilled to a depth of 3,000 meters, which takes an average of 35 days. During this process, no harm is done to the agricultural lands. Groundwater, or brine, is then extracted from the well. By the time it reaches the surface, its temperature reaches 165 degrees Celsius. This geothermal fluid is then piped into the vaporizer. The vaporizer is filled with motive fluid, or any fluid with a lower boiling point than water. Pipes filled with geothermal fluid run through the vaporizer, transferring the heat from it into the motive fluid. This causes the motive fluid to evaporate. The motive fluid vapor is then directed to the turbines, producing rotational shaft power, which is then transformed by the generator into electricity. The electricity travels onward into transformers and then supplied to the national grid. The motive fluid vapor, having done its job, gets sent through a recuperator and into condensers, where it turns back into a liquid. Once again, the liquid motive fluid goes through the recuperator, absorbing heat from the vapor headed towards the condensers. This helps cool the vapor, 
While jump starting the boiling process, the liquid will go through when it's sent back into the vaporizer. There, it'll absorb heat from geothermal fluid again and continue the cycle. Meanwhile, the used geothermal fluid is also used to heat the liquid motive fluid before it goes back into the vaporizer, helping the process along. Once the geothermal fluid has cooled, it's injected back into the ground through injection wells, safely returned to nature. It's all part of a continuous cycle. Nearly all geothermal fluid is recycled, minimizing waste. Communication between machines is crucial for monitoring all of these processes. These instruments transmit data like the equipment's temperature, pressure, and vibration levels to a SCADA monitor. This allows the entire plant to be managed and automated through SCADA screens ensuring everything operates smoothly and efficiently. All this technology works in concert to provide a fully sustainable and reusable energy source. Additionally, geothermal power plants release near-zero greenhouse gases. It also has one of the lowest water footprints of any energy technology, especially as it reuses the groundwater that generates its electricity. A geothermal power plant also takes up less space. Their structures are more compact, using less land per gigawatt hour than coal plants, wind and solar photovoltaic stations. They also have a very long lifespan. The Lardarello Geothermal Power Plant, the birthplace of geothermal-derived electric power, was established in 1904 and is still going strong. Maintenance isn't often needed. But electricity isn't the only thing a geothermal power plant can bring to the table. For example, at the Maspo plant, the research team is looking into other ways that geothermal energy and its components can provide benefits, like trying to determine how to obtain value from algae found in the underground water. In Maspo's research ponds, scientists found life thriving in the warmth, including spirulina algae, which is rich in protein and can be turned into nutritional and cosmetic products. A once waste pond became a living laboratory proof that clean energy and biodiversity can coexist. Also, things like geothermal district heating and cooling uses underground pipes to pass hot water or cold water through buildings as needed, whether it's winter or summer. Turkey's geothermal networks now warm over 125,000 homes and 4.5 million square meters of greenhouses year-round. Turkey now ranks fourth worldwide in geothermal power and first in Europe. Over 63 plants, mostly binary cycle, supplying about 3% of the nation's electricity, totaling 1.7 gigawatts and growing. The advantages are clear. Constant output, almost zero emissions, minimal land use and near total water recycling. Each facility can run for decades. The Earth's core heat will endure for billions of years. An energy source as infinite as it is invisible. Across Turkey, Geothermal energy already contributes thousands of megawatts to the national supply, and the potential continues to grow. While this is a great resource for places like Turkey and Iceland that have access to this natural resource, many other countries and geographical regions see this as a major potential for the future of green energy as well. While solar and wind represent a good source of alternative energy, they aren't perfect. Their power output can be very inconsistent as they are dependent on the wind blowing or the sun shining. Lithium-ion battery facilities are now becoming commonplace to even out this inconsistency. However, as well as taking up more land, lithium mining is considered a damaging industry. The battery packs also need to be cooled and monitored for fear of overheating and becoming a serious fire hazard. Many people around the world see geothermal as one of the main contenders for clean energy generation and numerous companies are actively trying to solve the digging problem through a range of advanced technologies. One of these is Quase Energy, who are working on developing something known as millimeter wave drilling. This technology uses high-frequency electromagnetic waves. A surface-based gyrotron transmits these through a waveguide down to the rock face. Moreover, this system uses a purge gas system, using pressurized gases to carry the waste to the surface rather than using drilling mud, which can break down at greater depths. The company is currently field testing the technology. Recently, they claim to have completed a 100-meter milestone at speeds 10 times faster than what they have achieved previously. 
which shows good progress. However, this is a far cry from the 10km, 6.2-mile depths often required for geothermal and the challenging environments that lay deep beneath our feet. Currently, most of the companies in this space are looking at how to best maximise the available heat at higher depths. Fervo Energy are doing this by drilling down to about 10,000 feet, just under 2 miles, and then thousands of feet horizontally. This effectively allows the fluid to be exposed to a lower heat, but for a longer duration. Fervo also have developed algorithms to help detect the best locations to drill. Many other companies are developing technologies for geothermal heating. Digging at shallower depths can allow the ground to be used more like an insulator. The top layers of earth will slowly take on the ambient temperatures throughout the seasons. At a certain depth, the ground will remain cooler in summer and hotter in winter. Liquid can then be pumped through the ground to prove a higher or lower starting point for heating and cooling purposes. So, while places like Turkey can benefit now from geothermal power, the rest of the world may have to wait for the technologies to catch up before fully taking advantage of this power source. However, strong use cases are already being developed around the technologies, and we may find that in the near future, we will be seeing geothermal being used in tandem with other power generation types to aid or supplement them, and reduce reliance on gas, coal and oil. What do you think? Is this the future of power generation, or do you think we already have a better solution? Let us know in the comments below.